Welcome to this new series looking at different questions that can be solved using nothing needed other than GCSE skills. So have a look and see if you can solve this question. So the question that we're actually going to be looking at today is this one. So this is your question and I would encourage you to write this down before we get started and have a go. So you've got a few seconds to write this down. Okay, so let's get started. Now what I would like you to do is obviously to try and have a go at this question, leave a comment below before you watch any further in the video, and let's see if you have got the correct solution. But moving on. So if we move this to the side, and let's just have a look at breaking this apart. Now what we have in this question is two pieces that are equal to each other, and they have the powers, we've got the square root, and we have to solve this to find the value of x. So if we do this, what we need to do is think about our laws of indices, and we need to have the same base number in order to equate those indices. So if we look at these individually and separate them apart, and let's just think about how we would actually approach this. Now the first thing that you need to remember is some of your rules of indices, and the ones that are going to apply to this question we're going to have a very quick look at, and here they are. So these are the things you need to know. If you were a little bit unsure already, feel free to pause the video again and have a go using some of these hints. But let's get moving. So we're going to use that second rule there for the, our piece on the left. Now in order to change that so it has a base number of 3 rather than a third, we're going to need to make the power negative and that would make it look like this. So we have three to the power of negative x squared minus two x over 16 minus two x cubed. Moving on to the right, in order to get that to be a three as our base number, we're gonna to need to use that first rule. So we're gonna to need to change that into a fraction and that fraction will be nine to the power of one over four x. We can now change the nine to become three squared and then we can multiply out that power using another one of our laws of indices. So that would give us three over two, uh, sorry, three to the power of two over four x. We can now divide that power by two on the top and the bottom, and we would have three to the power of one over two x. So now we're at a point where both of our pieces on either side of that equation have a base number of three. So if we come back to our main equation and we think about linking these up, this on the left, and this one on the right. So if we move those pieces back into an equation and have a look at them as if they already had the base number of three. Okay, so moving on from that, now they both have the same base number, we know that those powers must be equal. So we can forget the base number is even there and we can just equate the powers. So that would look like this. Now we have the powers equated to each other, we have a nice equation to solve. Now not forgetting that negative in front of our first, uh, our first power there could be written on the top or the bottom. So for the sake of this example and the way that I'm going to run through it, we're going to put the negative sign on the top of the fraction. At this point now we need to cross multiply. So we're going to multiply the right hand side by 16 minus 2x cubed and the left hand side by 2x. And when we do that, not forgetting the negative on the left, we end up with something like this. And now we have a nice a straight line equation to solve. And if you look at that, we've got the 2x cubed or the negative 2x cubed on both sides. So we can cancel that out by adding 2x cubed to both sides. And that gives us a really nice looking equation, 4x squared equals 16. We can now divide by four, which leaves us with x squared equals four. And square rooting both sides here would give us x is equal to positive or negative two. So at this point here, it looks like we have our solution. X is gonna be positive or negative two, but it's a little bit further than that. We need to think back to that original question. And actually that original question there had a fractional power. Now we know when it comes to fractions, that denominator cannot be negative. So looking at 16 take away x, 2x cubed, we know that that cannot equal zero because that would give us an undefined uh, result with our fraction. So we need to think about whether either of these answers could potentially leave us with that. 
So if we first substitute when x equals 2 into that denominator, you'll find that we do actually get the answer 0, so the answer cannot be 2. Whereas if we sub in negative 2, we actually get the answer 32. So we are allowed to have negative 2 as one of our solutions. So for this particular question, the solution to that equation was x is equal to negative 2. Okay, so if you like this video, please do leave a comment below. Let me know if you like this sort of video. Let me know if you like this sort of lesson, looking at these difficult questions. And obviously, if you did like it, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share the channel. And until next time, see you later. Thank you.